I am very pleased to host you here in Paris, uh, as, uh, as we host you uh, in uh, Singapore and uh, soon in uh, Boston. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here, uh, Mrs. Mattel, and uh, I really would like to congratulate to a fantastic exhibition. Yes. Yeah. The program is uh, excellent because it is very strong on uh, the exhibition side and also on the conference side. Huh? The content of our conferences is uh, unique in the world. And that is a concept that you use in, in all places, in, in Singapore, Boston and in yes. Paris. Yeah. Because as you know, uh, our organization has to accompany the composite industry uh, on knowledge it means uh, education, contents, and networking. So that's our motto. Huh? The motto for Jack is uh, knowledge and networking. Yeah. Where is composite as a material growing most uh, at the moment? In what industry? The composite market is growing in all regions of the world and in all, all sectors. Uh, all regions of the world, in mature countries, Western countries and also uh, emerging countries. Uh, we have a very good uh, growth everywhere and uh, on an average annual uh, rate it's uh, five to six percent. Okay. So it's a wonderful uh, growth. Yeah. I don't mm. think uh, many uh, markets can uh, mm. do the same. Yeah. So it's very good and also in all markets uh, composite materials are penetrating and uh, more and more uh, <coughs> taking uh, the, the right place because uh, composite materials bring so many qualities uh, resistance, lightness, anti-corrosion, uh, easiness to uh, design shapes and forms. Mm -hmm. uh, you have also the acoustic uh, uh, insulation, yeah. thermal insulation. Mm -hmm. So everywhere we can see composite materials uh, penetrating more and more. And of course the main markets uh, in the next 10 years will be uh, aerospace. We have to deliver so many planes and new planes. Uh, very important to use composite materials to save energy. and. Uh, uh, you have also the building and construction uh, sector. So that's uh, more in uh, Asia Pacific or South America. You ha we have to build everything. So of course composite materials are, are very mm. unique. Yeah. I, I think now also we see more and more views of composites in the automotive area. And that's a new thing. We use the thermoset and, and, and glass fiber mainly for the automotive parts and more and more you can see carbon fiber used in the automotive car that will be the next revolution we yeah, can say yeah i agree and for the la for the next 15 years yeah yes. I, I i had a report from the geneva motor show that was two weeks back and uh, i could see there was a lot of interesting new concepts especially for electric cars with the whole, I know the BMW, they will release the i3 car next year. Mm -hmm. Electric car with the complete body frame made out yeah. of a composite. And thanks to composite materials, they will save uh, around 150 kilos oh, yeah. in the car. So yeah. uh, this means the car will be lighter, will um, have uh, lower consumption of energy. And uh, so uh, I think it will be really the next important step yeah. to be able to produce large series. Uh, that's the, uh, we can say the challenge for the composite industry is to um, know how to manufacture large series. Yeah, because uh, the process time yes. is to long yes. as it is right now, yes. isn't that right? Yes, you yeah. are right. And yeah. uh, that's why um, machines, equipments, robots are so important. And yeah. you can see here in, uh, in JEC, 30% uh, of our exhibitors 
they present machines, they present software, they present robots. Because the challenge for the composite industry is to know how to manufacture large series. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, when we speak of automotive, we speak of large series. Exactly. Yeah. So it will be um, the, the next challenge. Yeah. For us as a Sandvik Coromant, as a cutting tool solution provider, yeah. aerospace is right now our focus. It's the most important area. Yes. And we are, we are working together with the American company, Precorp, uh -huh. uh, to provide solutions for both the Airbus A350 program and also the Boeing 787 program. Mm. And I mean, there we have about 50% content of composites in the aircrafts, yes. which is a big yeah. change compared to the older programs. Interesting but challenging, because we are in a, in a um, we say in, in a rupture, right? it's, a, it's a fundamental change to put uh, 40 or 50% of the structure in composite materials, yeah. huh? that's really uh, tremendous. Yeah. Huh? Never happened before. No. In, in this area, we, we have a challenge that uh, uh, is about the stack material that uh, the, the Airbus and Boeing are using, because to drill through only composite material is not so problematic, but when you have a stack material combining composite and aluminium or composite and titanium then we are coming into real big challenges because normally we optimize our tools for one type of material and here the drill has to cope with both uh, and, and that is really putting more challenge on us as, uh, as yes. a solution provider. For, I think for as we are going ahead we meet always new challenges yes yes and you are exactly uh, in this case yeah that that's why it is so important for your uh, research and development mm. to uh, be very close to customers exactly yes. and uh, we are open up application centers in different parts of the world so if the customer has a problem in his production or in a new project we can bring in his problem into our application center. We can do the same operations as he's doing. We can change something on our tools to make them work better. We can optimize the production methods and then we can go back to the customer and prove that the solution is working. Yes. In our value chain, the composite uh, value chain, yeah. every segment is very close to another segment. I mean uh, materials producers, manufacturers, equipment suppliers yeah. are working very close, closely and um, you know they, they create and invent all the new steps together. It's, it's a collective, it's a collective uh, thought. Exactly. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. uh, it's very typical of the composite market, the yeah. composite industry. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, industrialists are very uh, passionate mm. and uh, some of them are re real pioneers. Pioneers, but it is uh, o very obvious that all the, all the advances are made by the collective intelligence mm. exactly. of the value chain. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. We, we need uh, to understand how the resin how the carbon fibers are affecting the, the wear of our tools, uh, just as one example. And uh, when it comes to metals, I mean, we know all of this. When it comes to composites, we are still learning. Yes. We, we are in a learning And we stage. are learning as we move. Huh? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, because yes. there are coming new resins, uh, new yes. type of fibers and so on. Yes. Uh, so it, it's, it's really... I think you will uh, uh, have a, a bright future because uh, the composite materials will always, always change. Yeah. So you will have to adapt <laughs> yeah. and to offer new tools. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah. it's, uh, you know, we, we all have a brilliant future. <laughs> uh, I think so. I agree with you yes. 100%. And uh, our ambition in this area is really to be the, the number one solution provider together with our partner Precorp. So, uh, 
We will continue to develop solutions for the new materials coming, do it together with uh, our customers as close as possible, and to be there wherever the customers are in the world. I mean, we are a global company and the customers are global, so we, we need to be in Asia or Europe or Americas. Yes. Well, Jack Very is close. here uh, and Jack to uh, is here. accompany you yeah, and yeah. Uh, we have uh, the same strategy of accompanying uh, all our customers mm. and now with uh, the three platforms, one in uh, North America, one in Europe, one in Asia, the industry uh, can uh, benefit from all this uh, knowledge and networking. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So the platform will look the same, independent if it's here in Paris or in Singapore or Boston? Well, in fact, we have uh, the, the same uh, high quality of services, but we work precisely on what the local market needs. And if we are in North America, yeah. well, the subject, the topics will be a little different from what we are talking here in Europe or what we uh, will talk in June next June in uh, Singapore on Jack Asia. Okay. The, the most mature market is Europe. Mm. So we can mm. say that uh, the highest technological platform is here okay. in Europe. Because uh -huh. Europe is leading. Yeah. Europe is leading the market, mm. the worldwide market, mm. for its manufacturing assets. Okay. Uh, we are here in Europe very strong on manufacturing. For instance, if you take the number of uh, patents um, registered every year in Europe, 52% of all patents are on manufacturing innovations. Uh, the world is, uh, well, America, North America, and Asia, they are behind us. But here in Europe, we are very strong. We are leading the way for manufacturing. If you go to uh, Asia, uh, they have uh, strategy more on raw materials yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, if you go to north america you have uh, other specificity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and also for the markets if you go in north america you have a, a, a strong market in building and construction for instance uh, here in europe not so much um, you have everywhere the same concern for transportation, everywhere, huh? automotive, uh, aerospace, yeah. railway, railway, mass transit, everywhere. Yeah. And also everywhere we are looking for uh, new energy such as uh, mm. windmills, windmills yeah. solar panels, mm. and mm. Mm. here again we find composite I, materials. I think it's, it's probably <laughs> only the fantasy that puts the limits where it can be used. Eh? Yeah, I yeah. think that the human mind is the limit, yeah, human mind <laughs> not is the a materials. Limit. Eh? No, no, no. Mm. But it's so, very interesting to see uh, all these uh, new advances. Mm, mm. The next area that we really need to look closer on is the automotive sector. Yeah. What, what do you think? When, when will there be a big breakthrough in automotive for this material? Do you have any idea on that as it is? I think that uh, the car manufacturers are preparing the programs for the next uh, 10 years. But the, the, the real uh, step ahead will be uh, between uh, 2015 and 2020. Maybe we could see some uh, nano composites coming in, uh, in this uh, subject. Okay. Yes, okay. because with nano composites you can save uh, materials. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I could hear uh, some European companies are preparing a okay. uh, kind of revolution. In, uh -huh. uh, in batteries with uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. nano carbon fibers. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We'll uh, we'll uh, look at it very carefully. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So, uh, Mrs. Uh, Mutel, thanks a lot for taking your time. I know you are very very busy during yeah. these days. It was a pleasure, and yeah. uh, I hope uh, good good business for you. Uh, yeah. Uh, everywhere in the world. Huh? Yeah, and yeah. and we we will be back. 
Okay. <laughs> we will be back in Singapore so in, in June. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thanks Thank a lot. You. Thank, Thank you. you.